HET 194, Nate Preparation, Week 5 and 6, Tools of the Trade. The objective of this lesson is to help the HVC refrigeration learner to develop skills to understand how tools can help the technician with diagnosing HVC systems, discover how to use tools correctly, use electrical tools and meters to check for electrical current, discuss why it is important to use the right tool for the right job, and discuss the purpose of purchasing high-quality tools. In this introduction, tools afford the livelihood for technicians to perform their job. Using the right tool for the right job is indispensable, and good quality tools are worth their investment because it can last a lifetime if taken care of. So therefore, never forget, though, that the most important tool you have is the knowledge you gain and your senses. And those two things will get you through a lot of troubleshooting issues before using your tools. Therefore, your senses such as your sight, your hearing, your smell, your touch are things that you can uh, use to help use critical thinking skills to troubleshoot systems before you actually pull out many of the um, test equipment or tools that you would need. Service technicians understandably need a variety of basic mechanical tools including multiple types of hammers, screwdrivers, pliers, and wrenches because there are many types of tools for every type of task in the heating and air conditioning and ventilation refrigeration field, tools can become specialized based on the type of work the technician will perform. Therefore, technicians should only purchase tools and test equipment when they become required to the job on a regular basis. The vocabulary words for this week is hand tools, refrigeration tools, heating test equipment, airflow test equipment, temperature test equipment, and pressure test equipment. When it comes to refrigeration tools, there's many different type of things we will use, such as a uh, manifold set to check pressures. And of course, the manifold sets are used for service also to uh, make our job a little bit easier when we need to understand the pressures, but also on the uh, manifold set, uh, the gauges will be um, saturation temperatures corresponding with the refrigerant where we can use to understand the boiling temperatures or condensing temperatures of the uh, refrigerants we're using in the system. Of course there's other type tools like uh, uh, reclaimers which is a recovery machine to remove refrigerants from a refrigeration air conditioning system and there's other type of special equipment like te leak test uh, detection and where we use to locate refrigerant leaks in systems. But there's many other type of refrigeration tools such as for piping, uh, flare nut wrenches and things like that which we talked about in hand tools. So the type of piping f fitting tools such as tubing cutters for cutting copper tubing, uh, tubing benders, deburring tools, swaging tools, and this is a diagram, a picture of a uh, swaging tool or actually a, a flaring tool and that flaring tool you can use for doing um, also swaging and threading type tools such as pipe threaders for doing heavy uh, iron pipe. Dealing with temperatures we use multiple different types of uh, thermometers. In this picture is an electronic thermometer that can actually measure multiple temperatures at one time. As a matter of fact, this particular um, can actually measure humidity too, but in the field, when we're working on heating systems, air conditioning systems, refrigeration systems, we always check in temperatures because that's what we are controlling, is the temperature of the, uh, the equipment and of course we need to understand what temperature is operating at to, to, to troubleshoot to find out if it's working correctly or not. But there's also analog type of um, thermometers. Analog meaning that it has a needle and a scale that it will um, move mechanically instead of electronically where you can see the temperature. 
we use a lot of times pocket thermometers and these days they use electronic pocket thermometers which is more accurate because it's digital the analog because it's mechanical it can become out of calibration and things like that and because of that we need to always recalibrate them electronics pretty much have taken over uh, that because it doesn't fall out of calibration as easy as a analog type of um, thermometer there's many different type of pressure tools in this case this is a vacuum gauge instead of reading pressure it reads vacuums and we use that to use for refrigeration air conditioning systems when we pull a deep vacuum on it to be able to um, see how deep of vacuum that remove moisture or non-condensables or air from the system and only way we can determine that because uh, analog gauge may not be able to show that as well like the manifold set but a mi electronic micron gauge can read down extreme deep vacuums and this is a tool that we must use when we evacuating a system other type tools like humidity uh, there's a sling psychrometer and there's come in different uh, forms this is a very accurate one because it has uh, a mercury um, thermometers in it and the difference in that is have two thermometers and a sling psychrometer will have both a wet bulb and a dry bulb the wet bulb has uh, a sock on it that you must saturate with water and because of the evaporation when you sling it uh, through the air it will uh, drop the temperature down so you could determine what the wet bulb temperature is compared to the dry bulb temperature and to come to heating there's many different types of things we use for heating such as um, minometers to read gas pressure uh, there's fuel analyzers to determine what the burners are doing such as in carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide or excess uh, air or the temperature the flu temperature but we use those uh, fuel analyzers to uh, adjust the burners to make it as efficient as possible so we get uh, more efficiency out of the fuel compared to being very wasteful and also, also we use micro amp meters and that is used mostly it's a special type of amp meter that reads down into the millionth of a amp and we use that to regulate and to adjust the flame rectification system to make sure that the burners are working correctly to prove that there's a flame there and if there's not a flame to lock out um, the main gas valve so it doesn't um, become dangerous by sending uh, raw gas into the atmosphere there's many different type of airflow tools and some of the airflow tools are anometers anometers are used to read um, velocity of air through ductwork and it's very important because in ductwork the faster air moves through it the more noise it will create but also the friction it will cause in the ductwork to uh, cause turbulence and actually decrease the efficiency of uh, the, the blower or the system. Then also there's manometers. Just like gas manometers, they make manometers for reading uh, the air pressure, the static pressure in, in the ductwork. And this is very important because uh, too much pressure or not enough pressure can reduce the airflow in the ductwork so we use special tools to determine uh, airflow in in the system and this is tools that you must use if you're a technician or installer to make sure that it's designed correctly or the system is balanced correctly we also deal with uh, chemicals on a daily basis um, many acids dealing with like coil cleaners or cleaning cooling towers or deliming uh, water cool condensers and many other types of things where we use very strong chemicals um, so chemical hazards can range from being exposed to rooms uh, contaminated with high concentration of volatile fumes um, to be being exposed to liquids that is corrosive 
poisonous or liquids that could uh, cause burning of the skin or eyes. Therefore, technicians should be aware of issues to um, and be able to wear the correct PPEs based on the hazard. Having ventilation in rooms uh, is the first means of reducing the concentration of fumes that can cause harm and wearing the right type of gloves and breathing apparatus is necessary for personal safety. So some of the things we need to keep in mind with the chemicals we deal with such as uh, condenser coil cleaner, vapor coil cleaner, cooling tower chemicals, boiler chemicals, refrigerant oils, and refrigerants.